Bonnie. I'm good, Bonnie. How are you doing? How's Toronto? Oh, Toronto's great. We miss you. So, you know, you'll have to come back and bring Cabaret here, okay? Oh, I'm my God. I'm telling you that right now. I mean, you can't, you can't tell me that when I've just finished sort of six months of it and my body's broken. <laughs> no, 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 take a break. Give it a couple of years. Um, I mean, they all scare me, Bonnie, to be honest. Uh, but I've realized with me that that is quite a galvanizing um, force. This was the, the original movie of The Day of the Jackal was one of my favorite films growing up. It was it was one of those battered VHSs in my family that we all watched on repeat. And and I don't know what it was about it, but I, I found it so compelling. This idea of a kind of chameleon actor assassin and um, now, so when these scripts arrived in my inbox, it, there's obviously great trepidation because you don't want to butcher your <laughs> these things you hold in such high esteem. But what I read was something that was so contemporary and yet retained all of those kind of old school qualities of of the original that I had so kind of warmed to that I, I thought it was the sort of television that I would love to watch. And so I was kind of compelled to do it. and and came on as a producer to help guide it into the world in, in, in a way that um, kind of married with my instincts, I suppose. Yeah, um, and, and it is, it's so compelling. I was, you know, I've, given, I've, been, I've watched the first few episodes and I've been on the edge of my couch. Oh, and I have to say, how refreshing for you to be able to take a guy like this and flesh him out over 10 episodes, as opposed to just doing a film where it's a two hour film you know, can you talk about that and having that kind of freedom with this guy? Yeah, I mean, one of the, again, the reasons that it appealed to me so much was that when you watch the 1970s movie, um, for those um, <clears throat> who haven't seen it, Edward Fox plays the Jackal and he is so charismatic, but so enigmatic that you, you yeah. don't get a sense of what's going on internally. And that works beautifully in a two hour film, but obviously you can't sustain that for 10 hours. And, and what I love about this exploration is you get to see this man who, on the one hand, is a, a, a ferocious, talented, and sort of casually ruthless assassin, but who's also trying to marry that with being a dad and a loving husband. And, and of course, those things are uh, complex to, to meld, and yet he somehow believes or has the arrogance to believe that he can. Um, I love television. I love when I fall in love with characters, I love getting to sit with them for hours on end. And when I read the first three episodes of this, I thought, God, this is a character which I could really get my teeth into, along with all of the kind of, you know, the mimicry, the disguises, the the, the, the sort of old school um, spy craft, which was the stuff that I used to love in, in kind of movies from the 70s. Um, it was great to be able to pull all that in as well. Well, I don't want to give away too many spoilers for those who haven't seen it, but the when I read the, the first episode, there's a kind of there's a an acting challenge in those first twenty five minutes that the that, that Ron and the writer had put in, yeah. in which the, I had to sp sp play a different nationality, a different age, a totally different physicality, um, that involved like some quite intense mimicry and physical work and. And it's worked so beautifully in the script, uh, but felt like this very aggressive challenge as an actor. And I, I, I love that feeling of feeling outside your comfort zone and, and being pushed to things. I don't speak a word of German, so I got to work with a brilliant language coach called Simone, who, who had to teach me phonetically the kind of music of these lines. Um, but then also you then had to shift your voice down a couple of octaves so into you know, to, to make him 75 years old and a chain smoker. And all of that stuff 
it's play really and, and this whole series felt like an actor's playground for me. Completely. I mean, I I adore Lashana. I think she's formidable, not only as an actor, but as a producer. And what I love about this series is you have these two characters, both of whom are extraordinarily talented, passionate, meticulous, kind of, but will stop at nothing. And what comes with that is great moral ambiguity. And one of the things that appeal to Lashana, you know, who's worked, who played characters in MI6 before, and I don't think was particularly keen to come back until yeah. she found a character that was knotty and complicated and messy and could show all the spectrum of trying to navigate obsession with your work and whilst trying to sort of marry that with being a, a, a mother and a, and, a, 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 and a wife and and I think she in, enjoyed the kind of spectrum of, of qualities in, in, in Bianca. She's also a formidable producer, Lashana. She has instincts that are not only for the, for the words and the work and the cuts, but she's also incredibly musical. And so things like when we were trying to work out our title sequence, it was Lashana who suggested Celeste, who is the artist who, who sings the opening track. And we went out to her and she, you know, wrote a song for us. And um, so her, she's a polymath. And I'm so excited to see what else she goes on to, to, to produce as well as starring. Oh, this thank you. This series is off the charts. Congratulations. And can't wait to get you back here in our city. It's, it's a bit too long, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely to speak to you, Bonnie.